Give us the Patsy. We're now standing outside the loft of Patsy Tobin, a long time member of um, Carrigan Shore District Racing Pigeon Club. Uh, tell me, Patsy, how, how long are you in the racing pigeon business? Ah, well, I'm in this race. I'm in this sport a long time now. I, um, I'm in the sport about 35 years, maybe a little longer. And uh, I'm, racing pigeons the, I'm racing pigeons all the time with the lads here. And it's a good sport, very good sport. And I bred a few good pigeons. This is my best breeding pigeon now. This is pigeon... See, um, you're 30 years uh, flying pigeons, uh, but have you been a member of a club or was there, was there a club in existence at that time? No, there was no club in existence at that time, but uh, we had been flying, like, without being in a club. We, we were flying ourselves, just uh, a few members flying, flying now and every, every second week, maybe, and a few of us get together, say, which are the best board from Dublin. And So then after such a length of time, then we were flying when we, we joined the Federation. So we that, flew That's the Monster Federation. The Monster Federation. Yeah, so yeah. we flew the Monster Federation. But so did, you, did you form a club? Before you uh, joined the Federation, had your club oh, formed Oh, we formed the club then. We what formed the club then. What year? Roughly about, you know. Oh, I didn't... I, I can't... I can't record that now. I couldn't uh, say what year it was now. Would it be 20 right? years ago? Actually, we're near enough to it. We're so near it enough was, to 20 years. So it would be years, about yeah. 61, 62, yeah, yeah, 19 that, yeah. Right, right. Uh, and you formed a club and... Um, but what, what happens when you form a club? Uh, do you have to get some kind of a special clock? Well, you have to get a. Well, when you form a club, we bought it. We bought the first clock and we headed for the, for the club racing, and then we joined. Then with the Flame Federation, we all raced to the one clock. So uh, then, a few more of us got another few clocks, when we joined the federation, and we went to Limerick and we, got affiliated with the Monster Federation in Limerick. We went to a Monster Fed meeting with Seven Paddy Kehoe, right. and we got fixed up in all the federation, fixed up for all the lads and all. So. We're racing. But tell me a little bit about these clocks now, Patsy. Uh, you say they're, they're a special type of clock, and, and is there... Uh, can these clocks be interfered with, or how do you ensure that there's no interference with the clock from the time you set it? Or how do you go about setting the clocks? Or there, is there a special night for that and when you're sending the pigeons away? Yeah, well, we set the clocks We set the clocks on... If the race on Saturday, we set the clock on, on Friday night, and when we, we go to the Federation... We set them at half past six, so we have to check in with the Munster Federation. Then we say any time after that, like before ten o'clock, and then when the board come back on the on the following day, we have to go to, down to the phone again before two hours is up, and we check in with the Munster Federation again. So uh, then we check our clock, pull our clocks off on a 24-hour check. We pull them off at half past six, so then we open. We can open the clocks after that. Then um, all the racing made up on velocity. Right. But tell me a little bit about the, the actual club. The, the people watching this now would like to know uh, how you actually clock a particular pigeon. To explain a little bit about, the, about the, the marking of the pigeons and the rubber ring and how the rubber ring is recorded against your pigeon's ring number. And that's how the check is made. And I understand that you put the rubber ring into the clock. Well, you have a little, uh, you have a thimble and you put the rubber ring, take the rubber ring off the pigeon's leg. Yeah. And you put it into the little thimble. And you put it into the you put it into the little and put it into the clock, and you twist your clock then, and. Uh, he also has the other ring. Well, the other ring that's the, that's the registering. That's the register ring. This one, and the other one is the for the for the racing. Right. So when you have all that done, then it's in the clock, and you can't open the clock. If you go to open the clock, it makes a second puncture in the clock. So there must be only two punctures in the clock. One when you close the clock, and one when you open the clock. And if there's any more than two in it. If there's any more than two punctures in the clock, the clock is disqualified. I see. Right. So it is fairly it's, strict. It's fairly strict. It's strict. And, and would you say now that that type of, of racing would, um, is a very fair system? Oh, it is a fair system. Yeah, very fair system. There can't be any fiddling. So you mentioned velocity. Uh, does that mean now that, um, that it doesn't matter whether you're flying, we'll say, we'll say from where you were flying today now from Mallonhead, which is about 200 and what? 208 miles. 208 miles. Right. So now we'll say your friend Tony O'Brien in Piltdown, how far would he be flying? Well, he's flying, uh, 
He's playing around the one distance when we're coming from Elton Hedge. So, I mean, the, yeah. me the measurements is more yeah, or less yeah, the same. But it's more or like, less the same. If yeah. you had a fellow, we say, living out in County Waterford now, like that. Yeah, in Port Law now, yes. Mean? He'd be flying longer than you would He's he? flying about four miles farther than right. us from Elton Hedge. And how then do you go about making up the result? In other words, if Jimmy Maguire came in with a pigeon, and we say your friend Dan came in with a pigeon, and they'd have the clock, and I understand that the time would be stamped out on a paper roll in the clock. Now, how would you uh, set about deciding who, in fact, won the race? And how do you make it up? Well, you open up all the clocks then. You open, you open each clock individual, and you, you write down all the times on the... In, into the book. You read all the tapes, write down all the times into the book. When you have all that done, then then it's all made down, broke down into velocity then, like, you know. Yeah, broke well, down I, so many, borders find so many hours to the minute, like, you know. Well, well my understanding of it now is, Patsy, you know, being, being a very novice type fellow in the sport is that, that you, you take the distance, we'll say, that Patsy Tobin is fine. Yeah, you have yeah, a set yeah. distance, 208 miles from Malinhead to your loft where we're standing now, and you take the time, the, the time it took the pigeon to fly that distance. And I understand that, that you take the time and you bring that to seconds, is that right? You break that down to seconds. And you take the, the, the number of miles and yards and you break that down into 60. Yeah, 60 is And you divide yeah. the time into the distance and you find out how many yards per minute. Per minute. So it doesn't really matter then what distance, whether you're flying 150 miles or 220 yeah. miles. So the pigeon that flew the fastest in a minute, in a so many yeah, yards per yeah. minute. He's so do you think that's a very fair system? Oh, it is a fair system, very yeah. fair system. Yeah. It is all broke, it's all done up and calculated, like, you know. Right. They're all made out. And um, uh, what kind of uh, rewards are they, would say, if a fellow won a race? We'd say, like, today's race now for Malinhead, if a fellow was forced, can he can he enter the pigeon in the pools or can he have? Oh, a, he can can he the nominate pigeon. the pigeon he to win the race? He can nominate the pigeon in the, for the federation in the plowing pools, right. in the open pools, section pools, like, you know. Yeah. Well, you only nom one pigeon. You can nom, nom one pigeon for a pound. Right. And then you can have him in all the rest of the pools, like, from 50 pence down, like, down to, down to 10 pence, like, you know. So, right. uh, everything so when you say the nom then, Patsy, that if you nominated, we say, that pigeon there, we want you to tell us more about that mm. particular pigeon in a moment. If you nominated him and he won the race, would you get all the money in that particular nomination yeah, pool? Yeah, you get that nom. You the get the pound, so there's yeah, no yeah, second no. or third, is no, there? No, there's not. Just the one. There's only one. There's only one winner. There's only First one winner. home. Well, up to up to this year, last year there used to be. It just we all broke down last right. year, but there were a few complaints going in about the number board should take the money, so they right. broke it all down. The Munster Federation for this year, like for to give it all for the for the one board. First so board. like your attitude then is like Sean Kelly's attitude yeah. in cycling. There's only one man that matters, the winner. And he claims all. And he claims well, that's, all. I suppose that's yeah. fair, you know, if you have the best part. But you're holding a nice pigeon there now, Patsy, and would you give us... I understand he could be termed the father of your loft. Will you give us a little bit of his history there? And well, uh, this pigeon, he's at the, he bred torso, torso birds for me. Now, uh, we we'll explain for the benefit of the people watching this, where is Torso and how far would Torso be from, well, we're flying, from Carrick? Torso is the very top of Scotland, and so we're, we're, flying, uh, we're flying about 100, 463 miles. To Carrick. To Carrick. To Torso, right. Mm -hmm. Right. So now so tell us about this... Uh, I bred, I bred boars, I bred uh, boars off of this... Well, the first board I got to flew Torso wasn't, was no relation to this fella. He flew Torso for me. I won it into Carrick. I was sixth open. So I, I got another board then, as a, I got him as off of a friend up the road, Mercy Waters, a young pigeon, and he flew Torso for me, and he was fifth open in the whole of Munster. So then... I got this cock and I put him onto one of my own hens and I bred, I bred boars off him and I got a hen to fly Torso on the second day, a good hen. And she flew Torso the, sec the following year again for me, twice she flew Torso. And I bred another cock off this board that flew Torso in the one day. He left off at seven, 7 in the morning and he was in a mile after it, 10 past 7 in, the, in that evening. So you're saying that and that board was on the wing for, we'll say, over 12 hours. 12 hours and he flew it hours. on the day. On the day. And I understand the pigeon to fly from Torso to any part of the south of Ireland is a, a, is a it's good, good board that, that homes vision. on the day. Yeah. Well, then I have another another son off of this fellow then flew Torso again for me. And last year then I have another a daughter off of this cock that flew Torso again already, you know, right. as well for me. So what you're saying is this, the, over, so this, a, this over a period of years then nearly all the pigeons in your loft yeah. would be bred back and related in some way to this to cock. This cock. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. all through so he's the, he's, the, he's the pet as well as being the, yeah, he, he's the father the, of the loft. He's, the, he's the, the daddy of the loft. Right, right. So tell, tell us a little bit about the club now and 
the club, we, we, as you said, the club hasn't been about 22 or 23 years, and um, how many members, and is it is it costly, and, and what are the, the main, what are the main, you know, you tell us a little bit about the club, and then the main enjoyment that you got out of Flying Pigeons, and, and give us a little bit of reason why, is it because you have complete control, or go back, and give us a little bit of a history about the club now. Well, pigeon racing to me is, is a great thing, like, Lots of people be saying, like, what are you seeing, pigeons? Pigeon racing, to me, is one of the best sports is in the business because you have no arguments, you have really no arguments. You might have a couple at meetings, like, and if you don't have those at a meeting, like, you have no club. <laughs> but uh, pigeon racing is great. It's great to see your pigeon coming in and coming in first, like, and if you don't come in first, it's great to see you get in for the position. And, you know, it is, it's a really a nice sport. When you have them a long ways up the country, when you have them coming out of Gervin and... Gervin is in Scotland Gervin again. in Scotland, Scotland again, and yes. Perth. Right. And flying Perth and all. Like, you know, it's, it's really, really a good sport. What do you look for in a good sport? Right. Now tell us, Patsy, mm -hmm. what, if you came down to Middleton to my lot mm -hmm. now, and you, I said to you, now, Patsy, look, I, if you pick one of those pigeons out of, I have about 70, and what would you look for, I would say? Now, from, I'm only after starting, as you know, and I only started race this year for the first time ever. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you were to come into my life, what would you look for in a board? Well, me now, when I go to when I'm getting a pigeon ready for torso, I like to go in, I like to go and keep going into the my pigeon every day, and I'd pick up the pigeon and I'd handle them every day for torso because to see is he losing condition, and I like to see a pigeon with a good good strong wing, a good strong wing, a good muscle in the wing, and also to me a, a good a good chest, a good deep keel, and if you haven't a good deep keel, like to me like. He wouldn't be good enough for strong wind. You will, you will get a pigeon like a fly. We say if they haven't a good strong keel, keel bone, good strong chest on him, he will fly a distance. But you want a pigeon a good deep chest and a good strong wing. And I, I, I do, I do like, I do like looking for a nice eye like in a pigeon as well. Like I like, I like. A wait, nice wait, wait, one second, I'll pass you. on the eye. Uh, we hear yeah. and, and read a lot about mm. this famous eye sign. Yeah. Is it, is it a lot of cod's wallop, or is there something really in it? Does the eye tell a story, in other words, to you if you're looking at a pigeon? Well, I, uh, well, at, at times you will get fellas that'll say that, but I have got pigeons to fly from from all different race points and all different eye signs. The first pigeon flew for me from Torso had a, the red eye, red eye sign, like, you know, red kind of a, a little bit of green, a green kind of, you know, oh, he wanted a pearl. Uh, I, then I got the, I got this then, this, a different, this was a different eye again, like, you know, this was, this was the dark, as they call it, some 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 people like it. I'd call it the bull, bull eye, like you know. So every everyone go for a difference in a pigeon. I see, I see. Well, it's a good strong pigeon, a good body on them, like you want for flying the distance. You're yeah, fine, but uh, we get back to this business about about the club. Um, I understand that like it is a costly business to run a pigeon club, and and. Uh, and I understand that you have all functions in Carrick and draws and that. And are the people in Carrick as good to the pigeon club as they are to all other sports? And I mean, I'm involved in cycling, and they're very, very have always been very generous. And without their support, uh, I think in cycling in particular could not have have survived. And would you say the same thing about uh, pigeon racing now? Well, uh, years ago now we had a few church gate collections, but there was people like you know some people were saying for pigeons, so we didn't have any more of them, like right, you know. Right, so right. there were some I'm people. Sorry. There were some people come along and they were, you know, they were happy to train a few. Yeah, so I suppose if we could produce, if we could produce a, a Sean Kelly type pigeon, uh, y you might be getting more support. You and, might, uh, yeah. But I, I myself think that um, that pigeon fanciers, people like yourself and Dan Shanahan, they are now, they're a great example to to young people, and it's another sport that should be considered and and looked into. And I suppose if if young boys or, or girls, for that matter, or anybody that's been interested, I'm sure. Both yourself and Dan would be only too glad to talk to him or to invite to go along to a group, even a school group. Set or, him up with a few. Yes, and, and, and I believe pigeon fanciers are very generous and decent type people and they'll always give you always a they, couple of youngsters to start off. They always help, help out any new member starts. They, right. they, they likes to give a pigeon, give a few youngsters to anyone that starts with pigeons. Like right. they, they help them out in every way. And tell me now about, back to the racing again, I understand that if the pigeon doesn't have a ring, uh, and and you you're you're a member of the Carrie Club, which is affiliated to the Irish Homing Union. Is that correct? That's correct. And a pigeon without an IHU ring or a registered ring that would be re uh, registered to you or to Dan or any other member of the club, you cannot race that pigeon unless oh. proof 
You cannot that, phrase that, that pigeon. That pigeon belongs to, to yeah, you, and, and that's, is that correct? That's correct. Right. We say if I buy a pigeon off of you, I'll have to get them transferred from you to me before I can raise them. Right. And if I haven't a transfer, I can't raise them. Right. So we could look forward after this little uh, interview now, we could look forward to maybe a number of inquiries from young people and from anyone for that matter. Yeah. And um, I'm sure Dan would feel the same as yourself. That, uh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, I know myself now when I decided to come back into pigeons after 30 years uh, that people were most helpful to me. The, the fact that I live down in, in, in Cork, you know, they're, they're very tolerant to the Tipperary fellas down there. And I'm sure that, uh, you know, I've been treated very decent, both by yourself and Dan and, and other Eddie yeah. Waters. And I got a lot of help from all the Cali fellas and others as well. And, uh, and I certainly appreciate all you, you, you yourself particularly have done for me. And Patsy, we'll now have a look at, at some of your pigeons in flight. And uh, it'll give us some idea of the movement of the birds. Now there's Patsy there, he's, he's opening up the loft. Now he's releasing, these are all birds now, and he's letting them out for a, a fly. And there they go. And this is the evening exercise, and they're exercised usually twice a day in the morning and in the evening, and they'll come back in when Patsy will call them to be fed. And that'll be their feed for the, this part of the day, and then they'll be resting then for the night. And we're looking in there, and, and this bowl with a pair of eggs, and there's youngsters there, about four weeks old, and they're about to be weaned, or weaned off from their parents. And those are all Patsy's young birds, and he'll be racing those, and the racing season will start on the 14th of July.